things. Your most honorable ladies and gentlemen, and um, your most honorable Josh Whiteland, because um, I'm a co copycat. Uh, he's a very original forager. Um, the Aborigines of all countries, indigenous people, are, are the original, and we are just copying, but we try to copy as possible. <laughs> so, thank you for talking uh, after, after George. Yeah, to make sure this speech will have some guts in it, I have to tell you that I have been eating intestines on Crete and stomach in Rome, and uh, brain too in Rome. Uh, I once had the guts to order an item from the menu, normally reserved for Greek uh, traditionalists. What it was, it was testicles. I had it today too from Lebanon. <laughs> Thanks. It's, an, uh, it's, it's a, the old Roman uh, kitchen that has survived here and where in Lebanon and uh, Istanbul, for example. Yeah. But where did I uh, eat uh, those testicles? It was in a Greek restaurant, of course, but right here in Copenhagen. And that is all I have to say on the topic of bloody guts. Uh, when René invited me to speak at uh, this event about foraging in, in a modern world, he told me, <laughs> say something you have not dared to say before. And he meant it. <laughs> yeah. So he wanted me to address an audience of 600 freedom fighters in the global culinary and cultural revolution, looking for new ideas in their struggle, in your struggle. Yeah, that's not easy. But I humbly accepted your invitation, hoping that I have through previous uh, experiences, mobilized enough meters of guts to share some with you. Uh, for this young audience, uh, it must seem like ancient times. In the year of 1969, I tried to overpower the Swedish Prime Minister uh, with my arguments in front of 2,000 fellow students of Lund University in Skåne, the southernmost part of Sweden. The age of, at the age of 22, I had been inspired by the political shockwave from China three years earlier. The lesson was, bombard the headquarters, it's a right to rebel. So I went wild. The government had decided to build a large airport outside the town of Malmö in Scania, in my home territory. This was totally unacceptable to me as an amateur field biologist. Uh, I was furious. <coughs> because I was a part of that nature, and that nature was an essential part of my identity. I did not reflect over bravery or guts, I was just protecting that which I loved. The Swedish Prime Minister, Tage Lander, was defeated by a rational argument that day, and so was his successor, Olof Palme, uh, when he came to visit the university two years later, uh, at least according to the press. Despite our best efforts, Malmö Airport was built uh, more or less in a big nature reserve, full of birds and deer. And the decision was taken without any democratic process. Olof Palme had accepted the utopian vision of Örestad as a Scandinavian megalopolis, a Hamburg of the north, uh, to please the economic powers of his time. Uh, they want to build a new Copenhagen on the other side of the Strait of Öresund, uh, so we double the population here. Um, okay, the project went ahead without a referendum. I call that criminal. To survive as hominids, uh, we have to remember where we can find our different uh, foods. Uh, we are gatherers by the nature so we have strong memories of the places where we found those nice chanterelles, delicious nuts, nuts or berries in the forest. We also remember each restaurant by the same primordial instinct. We connect to that certain place when we eat there, becoming one with the place through the most ancient of sacraments. We get involved with the soil and the people producing the food. 
We get so much involved that we stand up and fight for the possibility to be able to eat that food again on that place. We must fight pollution and climate change <coughs> and all threats to our food. <coughs> it's a part of being a human being. As a chef, you must understand this. We must stand up and fight for healthy, sustainable production of clean food from a healthy planet. We must go wild. Uh, chefs <coughs> have a unique uh, opportunity in storytelling about food, its origin, history and the environment. Don't miss that chance. People need it. Gastronomic innovation in the fine dining kitchens always uh, spreads uh, to all other kitchens uh, and um, this is developing very rapidly now. A chef has to be historically and environmentally aware and conscious and uh, let the guests have something to take notice of and remember for a long time. The chef is suddenly required to become both teacher and uh, environmentalist. I'm an old teacher, you see, I, I, I must stand here by the pulpit or podium. I can't <laughs> live without it, but I ha had to do something else for it because I couldn't do any, couldn't do any, any teaching anymore. I had bad hearings. So, what to say? Yes, when, when you are, 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 when the guests are paying the bill on the restaurant, ask them to go home and save the planet. Take a chance. As the old proverb says, the man to a man, no, <coughs> the way to a man, 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 once again. <laughs> um, as the old proverb says, the way to a man's heart goes through his stomach. Completely disregarding its original sexist purpose of telling young women to learn to cook in order to attract suitable male companions, I still <laughs> think it holds wisdom. Uh, uh, I believe that the way to reach the mind of any human being goes through the mouth to the stomach, from the stomach to the heart, before finally reaching the head. Uh, you, can, um, you can become conscious of a wild world in crisis when eating wild food. The solution is on the plate in front of you. It just takes some guts to digest it all. I implore you. Um, using the words of Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Retour à la nature, and that is, uh, restore to man the forces of his, natu of his natural process, place him outside every bond of society and the prejudices of civilization. The fact that these solutions manifested themselves in Copenhagen is no coincidence. Contradictions are here on the highest level. Urbanization has forced one third, one third of the Danes to live in Copenhagen, a lovely city, but one third. The dream of the Eurostad, the now expanding city around the state of Eurostad, is planned to force one third of the total population of all the Nordic countries to move in, depopulating other parts of the region. That happens now. When I asked Olof Palme, in 1971 of how this was to be achieved. He couldn't uh, respond. How are we to motivate people to leave their homes in the Scandinavian nature to live in a nightmare megalopolis? Through highways and the Öresund Bridge, the cities and towns uh, were to grow into an urban unit, expanding on some of the most arable soil on earth, comparable to the black earth of Ukraine. The Swedish, state <coughs> the Swedish state originally planned for six nuclear power plants and um, the Danish state wanted to build a new airport hub on the island of Saltholm in the middle of Öresund. Uh, these uh, six reactors should be rather near on the Swedish side, just uh, some kilom kilometers from the airport. If not uh, for the efforts of brave citizens with guts, this uh, could have been a politically organized hell. Six reactors beneath an aerodrome with 60 million people, uh, passengers per year. It was, should be the biggest in the world at that time, bigger than Chicago's that had 
48 million passengers that year when they, they got the idea of crazy people. Uh, okay, we uh, could have been uh, the Scandinavian, we, we here could have been uh, the Scandinavian Fukushima. Today the Basebeck reactor, the plant called Basebeck, have closed down and our food is that much safer. Who would uh, want to cook and eat from Chernobyl or Fukushima? Don't let ignorant fools in suits gamble with your food, your health. Think of your own best, but at the same time, take responsibility for generations to come. Go wild. <coughs> this um, yearly gathering in Copenhagen, MAD, can be the first step to something new. We must, in different ways, find paths to wilderness, to natural living, to get to know some plot of the earth, a place to connect with and to protect during our short lives. We need to find a place where we can sit down and let our souls catch up with us like the old Native Americans did. Only then can we act responsibly. So, what's on the menu? A return to nature does not mean a return to what used to be, but something completely new. Leave towns and cities for the countryside. Decentralize and recolonize now abandoned but previously flourishing agrarian areas. It is all very easy. <coughs> Do you want to be uh, a cybernetic uh, robot, an alien? Or do you want to be an emotional human being? What's better, gathering in the supermarkets or in the wilderness? What are your goals with life? You have to get wild. We need a, a <coughs> we need a mental and geographical domain, a home range, a territory to defend with our life if necessary. I grew, I grew up in a town, but got interested for nature. I spent a lot of time biking in the vicinity of a town as a teenager. Through a feeling of identity with nature, I stood up for my home and for myself when politicians wanted to exploit it, um, the nature irresponsibly. I did it uh, with guts I knew nothing about, but trust me, it is there in all of us. Nature can help us find it. And without a piece of nature to fall in love with, we are doomed. Perhaps some weeds on the plate and the pellet is enough, at least as a starter. A piece of wilderness to mold, to mold our thinking, uh, to start transforming the so-called civilized, soci civilized society into something we cannot yet imagine, where people is the model for a sustainable civilization. The wild revolution did not start here in Copenhagen. The gathering heritage of indigenous people have survived, scattered across the world. Forgotten wisdom to be relearned, a renaissance of a original food. One of the most beautiful results of this culinary revolution is that indigenous people are restoring their dignity. Indigenous people are restoring their dignity. And that is good. I'm very happy for that. And uh, that is because their knowledge once again is recognized as important for our common future. Noma and Redzepi have been catalysts in this development by consistently using wild nature and local products to revitalize uh, the traditional kitchen. What a journey it has been. Not one odyssey, but a series of adventures in the wake of a Greek precursor. No doubt, Odysseus, just like René Redzepi, uh, must have had Macedonian ancestors. Uh, René also is a conqueror of the world, like uh, the Macedonian Alexander the Great. I'm forbidden to talk about Noma and René, but I, I can't let, I must. 
<laughs> um, weeds, mushrooms, and berries from Scania, the southernmost part of Sweden, have been delivered to regional restaurants ever since the creation of my company. It has meant weekly trips to Copenhagen for over a decade, but it started as a humble sale of mushrooms in the marketplace in Lund 15 years ago, where I had stud studied mathematics, biology, and chemistry, and uh, later also archaeology and quaternary biology and uh, petrology. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, you, you, you must have some knowledge to survive. <laughs> Therefore, they, they let me study two and a half year computer technology to build computers and, and to, to learn free programming, <laughs> programming languages. But uh, I get, didn't get any jobs, so I had to forage. <laughs> 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 I'm very happy for that. I'm very happy for that. Yeah, I uh, gradually expanded the assortment with weeds and berries, not only mushrooms, and started to sell to restaurants shortly thereafter. I was foraging to survive. I had no idea at that time that my little enterprise would become part of this expanding movement where the new Nordic cuisine and the new thinking of local ecological identity with nature it has been a quality-raising agenda that permeates the kitchens Awareness, social responsibility, sustainability. Um, the concept is spreading uh, globally at the speed of thought, illuminating minds and helping us to stay human. We go wild to rescue the planet and humanity with it. Now I have reached a point where I will say uh, what I have not dared to say before. Our gastronomic, culinary, cultural, and uh, global and revolutionary movement. Uh, it needs a rite of passage, uh, an um, initiation ceremony, some ritual event, some ritual event that marks a person's transition from one status to another. Go to the beach or to the woods or to some part of nature that you have made your own. Kneel on the ground. Maybe I should kneel too, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah I do, I, I think I do it. Here, it's a good place to kneel, yeah? <laughs> yeah? yeah. <coughs> it's not planned, it's um, in truth, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, where is, um, um, uh, uh, am I, uh, kneel on the ground. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Humbly bend your head, and here is uh, some uh, edible things too. Uh, um, <laughs> humbly bend your head, take a bite from a rooted plant, okay? It's, it's uh, wood sorrel. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Take a bite from a rooted plant. Yeah. Grace as the animal you are. Mm, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, contemplate with universal empathy our critical impact on this wild symphony of existence. Thank sun. Here is many suns. Yes. Uh, thank the sun for giving us energy, green plants, animals, and life. Infuse your identity with the earth. Be wild. Join the revolution. 